My name is Pam and I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Bug Smash initiative, which is um, what I've been mostly focusing my contribution on for the last several months. Um, Bug Smash initiative is quite simply a community initiative aimed at fixing known bugs in Drupal core, which I know sounds quite broad, but um, there is a method to the madness and the sort of fundamental premise that we're all working off is that there are a lot of bugs in Drupal core. Um, and I think uh, basically what happened was Lee Rollins, who's a core committer, just sort of got frustrated, I think, with the number of like really serious bugs, things that drive people crazy and, um, and the, the slow pace of getting those addressed that he just basically said, I think we need to really focus our energy just on getting rid of um, some of the more annoying bugs. And um, that was really where it started. Lee sort of came up with a vision for it. We um, started having meetings and then that's how the ball got rolling. So right now, this is just like a, an overview of where Drupal core is right now, which is 7,474 open bug reports. 1,092 of those are major or critical. Um, as you can see, there are thousands of bugs that either needs work or needs review, which means that there is a patch uh, at least one patch against those issues and um, could be, you know, assisted with patch reviews, manual testing, uh, patch rerolls, whatever it is. There are 23 RTBC bugs, which um, hopefully means that they're about to be fixed. And then there are uh, just over 15,000 bugs that we have closed. So that's just a quick overview of where we are currently in the state of Drupal core. Um, and then just quickly, I'll, I'll talk about how we've been working and how, how we've been kind of attacking the, um, the bug issue queue. So it's basically the, the bulk of it is just triage and triage probably sounds really either boring or uh, maybe it sounds intimidating or I, I'm not really sure, but basically the, the, the whole key to this initiative is triage. So the first thing that we've been doing is just going through old bugs and either um, adding steps to reproduce if there weren't steps there to begin with or updating them based on changes to core or just kind of make, to make them more concise. And when I first started doing this I was digging up issues from five years ago and um, rewriting the steps to test, to test them just kind of thought, what is the point of this? You know, is this really going to matter? And I was blown away because just the simple step of um, updating the issue summary to clearly explain what the bug was was enough to get people writing patches. So I think for, for me, it was amazing to see that there are people out there who are looking for ways to contribute, but maybe they just didn't know where. And um, a lot of times these bugs that get reported, it's not entirely clear what the user meant. And so you have to kind of step through it and look around and try to kind of figure out what they meant. And then once you can put it in terms that's easy to reproduce and easy to understand, then, um, then the, these things are getting worked on. A couple of the other things we've been doing is just recategorizing. So sometimes someone will log a bug and say, um, you know, this doesn't work, but actually it's, it works the way it's meant to work. So um, they're either asking for a new feature or just, you know, it's, it's more of a task, you know, more of a to do rather than a, an actual bug. Um, another thing we do is update the issue priority. So by um, uh, there tends to be a bit of abuse of the critical and major statuses. And so by just kind of keeping that clean, it, I, I think it helps uh, the community focus and, you know, if, if critical and major, if we know that those are being applied properly, it's easier to prioritize those, I think. And then um, the probably the biggest thing we've been able to do is just to close older outdated issues, either where there was a duplicate and the issue's been fixed in the meantime, or, you know, it's a bug against uh, like trigger module, which was removed in Drupal 8. So um, we can just kind of either close that as obsolete, move it to the contrib queue, like simple test, we moved all the simple test issues from core to the simple test queue, um, just, to, just to clear them out. And that actually, I, I think it helps a lot because I think if we can get to a point where all of the bugs in the queue are like legitimate bugs, I think it'll just become easier, um, easier to work through them. And then just a couple of other things, we've tried to do some group triage sessions by Google Meet where a couple of people jump on a meet and just kind of talk through a bunch of issues and, you know, what do you think about this and, and triage them very quickly. And that worked really well, but it's, just, it's been a bit tricky to find, um, to find good times for that where, where everyone's time zones line. And then the last thing to note is that if you do find a bug that either you can't reproduce or um, works as designed or it's a duplicate and you close it, in the traditional issue um, system, you don't get any credit for that. 
So what we do is we have a meta issue each fortnight where you can post the bugs that you close and then we will give anyone who did that to at least one bug in the fortnight will get a core contribution credit. Um, so a couple of the other things we do are, I'll just brief through this quickly, we set, we set targets so we might um, pick an issue or a series of issues that we want to focus on for the fortnight and we all kind of pile on and, and throw our resources at that either through reviews or um, writing tests or whatever it is. We do a lot of patch reviews and we also have a system that we call review swap where you can come in and post an issue that you want to get reviewed and then you basically offer to review someone else's uh, in return. Um, writing tests is also a big thing that's needed because a bug fix can't be committed if it doesn't have an automated test, so that's a big one. Um, and then we also do a lot of mentoring, you know, um, bringing in, tr trying to encourage new contributors. There's quite a low bar for entry because there's such a range of things that need doing. So we found we have a lot of people just pop in and ask a question, oh, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how to get set up to run um, the Drupal test bot on my local environment, or, you know, what's the process for marking an issue RTBC? These kinds of questions that, process questions that tend to prevent people from contributing, we have a, a very uh, captive audience to answer those questions. So this is um, what we've done since we started on the 30th of May. We've, we've closed 612 bugs and we've fixed 125 of those. So the fixed means a fix got contributed to core for that issue. The other ones were outdated, um, can't reproduce, all these other things. And then these are, these are a couple of uh, other stats. This is just overall the number of bugs in, from April to uh, October. The difference is, is quite big there, you can see. And then these are just some stats about the average age, which are a little bit less impressive because um, six months passed between those two deadlines. So those numbers didn't go down as much as we would have liked. Um, and I'll just talk quickly about why I contribute to this initiative and, um, and hopefully these reasons resonate for you as well. So, uh, the, the first big thing is that a lot of the core meetings happen either really late in our night or, or first thing in our morning, just totally unfriendly times. And because this initiative was started by Lee and has a number of Australian contributors, we do our, we do our meetings and, and we tend to have our most active times during the Australian daytime. So it's a really good way for people in this time zone to get involved. Um, another thing that I think is pretty cool is just the ability to collaborate with core committers and subsystem maintainers kind of on a daily basis. So if you post a question about views, we've got um, Len who's a views subsystem maintainer in there answering those questions, Lee's in there all the time. Um, we've, got, we've just got a really active and helpful community of the experts to um, answer your questions and kind of guide you if you need it. You can also selfishly uh, earn karma to fix bugs that you might care about. So if you jump in and help out on a couple of bugs that aren't really things that bother you very much, but it's something you have expertise in. By contributing to that, you'll, you'll basically earn karma and, and make it more likely that you'll get help with a bug that you do care about. Another thing that's cool about it is that there is a lot of stuff you can do to help. It's not just writing patches, so it's not just all about code and it's, it's not all super technical. There's a lot of different ways that you can contribute. Um, it also just feels good, I think, to help. Um, obviously, you know, my livelihood is based on Drupal and I, um, I think it's really great that it's run by a community and I, I feel really lucky to be able to um, give back in, in a very small way. I also have learned so, so much. This is another sort of selfish thing, but um, triaging issues is an incredible way to learn about Drupal. There are so many things that people either trying to do or, or systems that I don't, don't normally touch in my job, like um, translation, for example. I never use multilingual functionality in my job, but I've done so much uh, trying to reproduce multilingual bugs that I could, I could pretty well set up a multilingual site um, from scratch just on that basis alone. So I, I strongly encourage you, like I said, a couple of selfish reasons. Um, you, you'll, you'll learn so much. Um, it's also just it's a super supportive community, and I've really enjoyed um, just meeting new people and, and talking to people through the initiative. Um, so how you can help, uh, there are a couple of ways, but I think the first way and the, the way that everybody can, um, can and probably will is by filing good bug reports. So um, one thing that I've kind of really um, taken on board is before you create a bug in Drupal core, be really, really sure that it's a, a thing that's broken and it's not something that either, you know, it just doesn't work, doesn't work the way you think it should or, um, you know, you did it wrong. There is so much energy that goes into triaging these bugs. And if you just kind of throw it up without a thought and say, well, they'll, oh, they'll want to know about this bug. Uh, there is no they, it's, it's us. And so just be really sure that it's a bug. Check for duplicates. 
um, you know, obviously it sometimes can be hard, but at least do a cursory search to make sure that um, it's not a duplicate. Please, 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 please include steps to reproduce. Even if you think it's something so obvious, it couldn't possibly need the step-by-step, -step, please include steps to reproduce, starting from install Drupal. This is so, 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 so important. I cannot emphasize it enough. Um, for one thing, it means that anyone who comes along that might not know the first thing about it, like I said with the multilingual, I don't know anything about multilingual. If someone puts in steps to test, I can verify that it is an issue, and then we can easily verify that the issue is fixed. The other thing it, it makes sure is that it's not a contrib bug. It's not coming from a contrib module. If you if you reproduce it in vanilla Drupal, we know it's really a bug. Um, also, just be sure to use the issue summary template, which is linked in the um, description when you're creating a new issue. And lastly, just um, just be nice. Uh, I've seen a lot of um, kind of shocking attitude and language in some of these issues, and um, I can tell you that if you're not if you're not being nice, you're much um, less likely to be to, to get help. So just just be nice. Um, so there, these are the, the ways you can join us. Just jump into um, the Bug Smash chat in Drupal Slack. You can direct message me anytime. We have fortnightly meetings at 2 p.m. Sydney time on Slack, and then that is a link to our initiative page where you can learn more about our, um, our initiative, what we've been doing, how to get involved, all those kinds of things. So that's it.